there's not much you can do just entering all the values you need directly into a single expression every time. Things start to get interesting only when you assign values into variables. So for example, let's say we want to apply the quadratic formula for finding roots. I assign values for a, b, and c that define a particular quadratic polynomial. Then I can compute the discriminant, which I call d. From here, I can finish computing the two roots, which I call x1 and x2. Now in MATLAB, a variable always has to have a value. If I try to refer to a different name like t that has not been assigned anything, I get an error. Furthermore, the value of a variable is fixed at the assignment time, and it doesn't change unless you do a new assignment. So if I were to give a new value to the variable b that I used in the calculations above, then it changes b, but it does not change any of the subsequent calculations that used b before. I would have to rerun all those lines in order to update the other values. You may have noticed that as I work, the variables appear in the workspace window over here. The workspace tells you all the variables that are currently defined. You may also be able to see the values themselves if they fit. By double clicking on a variable in the workspace window, I get a spreadsheet that I could use to inspect the value or change it, although that's relatively cumbersome in this situation. If you look here, you will see that there is another variable that I did not specifically assign called ants. Whenever a command or expression returns a result that is not explicitly assigned to a variable by you, MATLAB assigns that result to ants. In other words, ANTS always holds the most recent unnamed result. This can be useful for continuing or modifying a calculation. Sometimes you don't want to see the results of every single statement. This is especially true when a result is a very large array. If you put a semicolon at the end of a statement, the result will not be typed out. The rules for variable names are very simple. Variable names can contain letters, numbers, and underscore symbols, and the first character in the name must be a letter. MATLAB does distinguish between capital and lowercase letters, so little a and capital A are different variables. One quirk of MATLAB is that you can assign new values to most of the built-in names and functions. For instance, I can set pi to be exactly 3. That would have some interesting effects on later calculations that use pi. I can also declare, for example, that the name Kos now equals 1. Obviously, these are not just weird ideas, but bad ones. In order to get the built-in definitions back, I can use the clear command. If I use clear on a line by itself, it wipes out the definitions of all the variables. That's all you should need to know about variables for now. Of course, if it took a lot of commands or a lot of computer time to calculate your values, you'd probably want to be able to save the commands or the variables, or both, for use in future sessions. That's the subject of the next video.